Welcome back to Movie Village. Buckle in for one heck of a ride. But before we get started, I'm a new channel. I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel and leave your thoughts on this story down below. Our story starts off with Dr. Will Farrow. He's performing a life-saving separation surgery on conjoined twins who are conjoined by the head. After a stressful but successful surgery, both twins are over the operation and are stable. After the operation, his wife Ingrid meets him because they are going to her father's and sister Sally for a few days. They both live together out in the country. On the way there, they talk about how their son is coming to visit tomorrow and how secretive he is being about his new girlfriend. Ingrid says all she knows is that he's with someone who is older than him. At the house, she tells him he needs to take it easy over the next few days because he has had a really stressful few weeks at work. They have a little adult fun time, then go to sleep in the beautiful country home. The next morning, their handsome son Jay arrives and a very excited mother. As they are getting breakfast ready, they all question him about his new girlfriend and ask when he is going to introduce her. He tells them that he really likes her, but he won't even tell them her name or any details about her. Later, while on a family walk, Aunt Sally manages to get Jay's new girlfriend's name out of him. Her name is Anna Barton. They all laugh, saying that they finally broke him, and now they know the new girl's name. While on the walk, the grandfather invites Will to a party in Parliament later that evening. A reluctant Will agrees to go. At the party, we see a bunch of posh, rich people discussing how they are going to make great changes when it comes to urgent care within the health field. Will doesn't want to be there at all. He is so bored. His wife Ingrid texted him saying that she was running late. We then see him and a random girl catch each other's eye and stare at each other from across the room for way too long, only breaking eye contact when his father-in-law started talking to him. He goes to the bar to wait for his wife. The girl goes to the bar too and introduces herself as Anna Barton. He clearly didn't know she was his son's girlfriend, but it seems like she knew he was Jay's father, yet she still stared at him in that sexual way. They are talking about Jay, but yet you can cut the sexual tension with a knife. She looks down at the olive he got from the bar and asks, Is that for me? He takes the olive and puts it in her mouth. Too far, Dad. That is your son's girlfriend, for goodness sake. She eats the olive, but I bet she wishes it was something else being put in her mouth. She then leaves. Ingrid finally arrives, but they leave right away too because Will is too tired to stay. We then see Jay's girlfriend creepily staring after them as they get into a taxi. Ingrid says she heard Jay's girlfriend was supposed to be there at the party and asks if he bumped into her. He lied and said, No, he doesn't even know what she looks like. I wonder why you're lying, Dad. Guilty much? You definitely wouldn't lie if he had nothing to hide, Dad. Isn't that right? Anna gets home and wakes Jay for some hanky-panky time. After they finish, he tells her it's time she met his family and plans to go spend the weekend with them. Well, that's going to be awkward. The next morning, Jay gets a missed call from his dad. Creepy Anna sees this and saves his dad's phone number in her phone, then calls him. When he answered, all she said was, I'm coming to lunch next week, I want you to know. Then she hangs up. He then saves her phone number as A. They all arrive at Grandfather's house, where Anna and Jay pretend they are meeting for the first time, and as soon as Anna and Jay are alone, she immediately starts flirting with him, so beyond disrespectful. Will is surprised by this but likes it at the same time. Later at dinner, she makes things awkward by blatantly flirting with him again. This girl is giving me unhinged vibes, guys, and so is Will, honestly. I don't like her at all. She puts some dishes in the sink and they both start touching hands. They stare at each other again. Gosh, could you imagine your dad behaving like that? When Will gets home, he gets a message from his son's girlfriend saying, I like the drink you chose for me. He deletes it right away. Perhaps he is coming to his senses and cutting it off right now before it's too late. I highly doubt that, though. At work, she calls him. He almost didn't answer the phone. He knows too well that nothing good is going to come from that phone call. But after his assistant asks him if he's going to answer it, he then ends up answering. It's Anna, and all she says is, 4.30. Will says, send me your address, and she hangs up. He looks happy about what is about to happen, his assistant notices his behavior and can tell it was a woman he was talking to, and she doesn't look too pleased. She probably knows he's going to cheat on his wife. We then see him looking at pictures of him and his poor son. For a split second, guilt takes over, and it looks like he won't go to meet Anna at 
but his trouser snake takes over and he goes to meet her. He meets her in an empty apartment. She takes off his clothes, leaving hers on except for her underwear. She lays on the floor and just says one word. She says, yes. Then they play for about ten seconds and they finish. Was it really worth it, Will? You betrayed your son for a few seconds of pleasure. They don't talk at all during these few seconds. She walks off and he leaves too. He goes home, takes a shower, and acts like nothing happened. The next day, his poor son asks him to meet him in the pub. Jay asks Will if his mom likes Anna, which he doesn't think she does. He tells him that she does, but she just doesn't want him to rush into things. He asks his dad if he thinks he's rushing into things. He says it doesn't matter what he thinks. Once you love each other, that's all that matters. He tells his dad he wants him and Anna to get to know each other more. His dad gives this pervy look as if to say he is going to get to know her really well. Probably a bit too well. Later, we see that the affair has been going on for a few days now. We see Will and Anna meet again. They sit and stare at each other, then have some adult time again up against the wall this time. During playtime, she says, I surrender to you. This turns him on, so he grabs her by the hair and takes her. After they finish playing, they lay on the floor, where he is wetting her with a cloth and water. He asks her if she meant what she said earlier about surrendering to him. She said yes, she meant it. She pours some wine and says, Here are the rules. Rule number one, you wait for me to say when. Rule number two, you never ever turn up uninvited. Rule three, nothing ever happens beyond these walls or without her permission, and that it is her choice to surrender to him. She tells him that she gives him his power and asks if he can accept that. Then, in that apartment, they can be whoever they desire to be. She tells him to kneel before her, then he can have her. He kneels before her, he is completely infatuated by her. So they are clearly happy, showing zero guilt for betraying Ingrid and Jay. Later he finds a diary tied shut with a red ribbon. He asks if he can read it. She says no and takes it from him. He finds it a bit weird. That's the only part you're finding weird, Will? She says he can read it, but not yet. He asks her if she lets his son read it. She walks off. The next day, Jay finishes a run and then sits down for some tea with his dad. They talk about Anna, and Jay says it's getting pretty serious with them, and that he's taking her on vacation to Paris soon. Will seems to get jealous hearing this. While at a work event with his father-in-law, he gets a message from Anna saying to meet him at the empty apartment at 6.30. He tells his father-in-law he has to leave because there is an emergency at work and goes to meet Anna. As he gets there, he gets a message from her saying, Don't come. But he knocks at the door anyway and a woman answers. She introduces herself as Peggy and tells him Anna didn't tell her she was expecting anyone. She then gets Anna and invites him in for some wine. Peggy tells him she lives there, but Anna tells him she's an old friend and only stays there when she's in town, and Anna takes care of the apartment for her. She closes the door in his face, so he leaves. Later at home, Will is staring off while daydreaming. Ingrid sits alone with a glass of wine. She says to him that she thinks something is happening between them and says she can't imagine him having an affair. He assures her that he's not having an affair and that he's just having a hard time at work. It's been stressful. She suggests that they go on a getaway, just the two of them. He is happy about this idea. Anna and Will meet again and he's tying her up and playing with her. He tells her to let him read her diary. She tells him he has to earn the right to read it. This turns him on. Later, she lets him read some pages in her diary, where she wrote in great detail about their affair. He wants to know if she writes about his son and her, too. He says he's trying to understand what it is she has with him and Jay. He finds out that Jay knows she goes to the apartment, but he knows not to ask her questions. Will says, what if he finds out about us? She says there are so many other truths and that he allows her to have her secrets. Pervy Dad says that his son has so much of her and that he wants more of her. He tells her he wants to ask her so many questions. She says to just learn to love the questions. She gets frustrated and asks him what he needs. He tells her he needs something that his son doesn't know about her. She tells him she had a brother, Aston, who passed away by unaliving himself. He unalived himself because he was in love with her. In love with his own sister. He was infatuated with her. He unalived himself because she wouldn't get into a relationship with him. And she said that no one in her family knew but him and her. How messed up is that? Will feels bad for her but is happy that he now knows something about her that Jay doesn't. 
She tells him that knowing this detail about her should change how he feels about her because damaged people are dangerous because they know they can survive. After she walks off, he rips a page of her diary out, the one where she talks about their previous playtime meeting. At dinner, Ingrid tells Will that she thinks Jay is going to propose to Anna in Paris and that she has a bad feeling about this. It's too soon, and they literally don't know anything about her. She said Anna won't say a thing about her to them or Jay. Ingrid doesn't understand why people need to have that many secrets, and thinks Jay is obsessed with her. He asks Ingrid where they are staying in Paris. She gives him the hotel name. He then tells her that he has to go to Brussels on Thursday for a work conference, but of course he doesn't go there. He instead follows Jay and Anna to Paris. Will is becoming completely obsessed with Anna. He stays at a bar across the road from the hotel they are staying at all friggin' day, just sitting there like a creep fantasizing about Anna, waiting to see them arrive. While Jay and Anna are getting ready to go out, we see Will texting her, but she ignores it. Jay asks her who it was and if it was important. She says no and continues to ignore Will. He then calls their hotel room, and Anna answers. He tells her to leave the hotel and meet him at the end of the street. She wasn't going to go, but she changed her mind. She tells Jay while he's getting ready for dinner. She's going to go out for some fresh air. She grabs Will by the hair and asks him what the F he is doing. He pushes her face towards the wall and takes her. They are both enjoying it. He has finished playing with her. She tells him that he has broken the rules, and don't even think about following her and Jay for the rest of the trip. How does she not feel dirty and disgusting right now? Poor Jay is sitting on the bed waiting for her. She comes back and tells him she can't go to dinner because she has a migraine. You can see that Jay is starting to feel like something isn't quite right. He doesn't know what it is, but he knows it's something. He asks Anna if she really has a migraine or if something else is the matter. She then tells him to learn to love the questions. What the heck? Jay sits there in deep thought, knowing she's lying about something. The next day, Anna for once looks a tad bit guilty, or maybe she's just annoyed that she has lost control of Will. Creepy Will sits across from the hotel again watching them as they leave. He calls the hotel and asks to stay in the room his son and Anna were staying in. He then starts sniffing the bed and takes off his clothes, and starts sniffing and biting the cushions. He can smell Anna's perfume on one of the cushions. He then takes off his clothes and starts to pet his snake while burying his face in the pillow he smells Anna on. Jay and Anna arrive back home, and Anna says that she is not very good company right now and tells Jay that she just needs to get home and that she will call him later, further making him suspicious. I think it's time you stop learning to love the questions, Jay, and start demanding some answers. We see Anna arriving at a house. It's her mom's house, where she lives too. Her mom is asleep on the sofa with what looks like a glass of alcohol beside her. It looks like Anna has just moved in because there are boxes everywhere in her room. She gets a text from Peggy and is happy to hear from her. They head out to a bar and Peggy asks why she came back from Paris so early. Anna tells her that the guy that was at her apartment earlier is her boyfriend's father, and he followed them to Paris. She looks disappointed and concerned for her and asks, What is this? What if his family or Jay find out? Anna said they won't find out because no one knows. Peggy says, Well, I know now. She gets annoyed that Peggy disapproves and walks away. Later in bed, she can't sleep. She's too much in her own head, thinking of how deep all of this has gotten. At work, some beautiful flowers are delivered to her. They are from Jay. She reads the note it came with, and it says, I'm learning to love the questions. She smiles and calls him to thank him. He tells her that he forgot to say something in Paris. She goes to his apartment that night, and he proposes to her. That same night, Will and Ingrid are having dinner, and she asks him how his conference went. He says he's glad he went. He gets a message. He says it might be work. Ingrid looks at him like she doesn't believe him. We then see the message is from an unknown number, and it says, I know what you're doing. Stop now, pervert. He has this shocked look on his face. Ingrid asks him what is wrong. He walks off saying he has to make a call. She, too, now knows something isn't right. While poor Jay is inside making Anna a delicious meal, she answers a call from Will. He tells her he needs to talk to her about something, but she interrupts him by saying she thinks Jay is going to propose to her tonight, but she needs Will's permission. You guys, what the actual F? She said that he knows the rules, so I need you to say yes. He asks why she needs him to say yes. She said, I want Jay because he's my normality.
and this is what she wants. Well, then why are you asking Will for permission then? God, she's insufferable. So he says, Anna, when Jay asks you to marry him, you will say yes. She then says, you won't have any less of me that he will have more of her now. God, I can't stand them. He didn't end up telling her about the message he got from the anonymous number. Jay then brings her to his rooftop of his apartment and asks her to marry him. She cries and says yes. Will goes back into his house but looks upset and just stares off into space as always. Ingrid asks him if he's okay. He said yes, he is okay. And that's the end of part one and two. If you like this video, make sure to come back soon to see my next video where I talk about the last two episodes of this show. The next two episodes get even more intense. Something shocking happens next. I really wasn't expecting it. So make sure to come back soon. Make sure hit that bell so you'll be notified when I upload and please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.